Welcome to Fear No Evil, where Psalms 23 is the foundation, and Jesus, and some people know him as Yeshua, is my shepherd at all times. I usually change the picture, but I happen to like this picture of just being alone in a boat, on a body of water, traveling to where you don't even know where you're going, because that is child sexual abuse and healing from it. You have no clue where you're going to end up, but I want to be a witness to you to let you know that every time you deal with your own history of child sexual abuse, you will end up in a better place. Now, I just want today go through the signs and the symptoms of sexual abuse because there are many. And there's a list that's even longer than what I'm going to read. And I'm using the Childhood Sexual Abuse book written by Karen L. Kinnear, Contemporary World Issues. And I would have to say that it probably doesn't matter where you're from or what country you are from. These symptoms and these signs, you will go through them. If you're a child sexual abuse survivor, we will hit these signs and symptoms at different ages, at different times. They will manifest into something else. That's what we have in common. What we don't have in common is how they manifest and how we get through each one of them. Nor is it common how many times we may have to go through something in order to get to the other side. So I am not going to, I'm not going to break these down. Because you can manifest one of the symptoms as a toddler or a baby, but it can show up as an adolescent or an adult in a different form. So let me begin. Here are the signs and symptoms of childhood sexual abuse, and these are not all of them. Children 18 months and under, urinary and bowel problems, fretful behavior, flat effect, Lacerations of sex organs, bleeding, discharge, or odors or, or odors from sex organs, inappropriate fear of adults, fear of being abandoned, excessive clinging behavior or the opposite, failure to thrive, excessive crying, extreme behavior change, sleep disturbances. Now, although this says children 18 months and under, you can be an adult and still experience sleep disturbances, extreme behavior changes, excessive crying, failure to thrive can be in your career. It can be in your goals that you want to achieve for yourself. It can be in your home. Excessive cleaning behavior or the opposite. Behavior like that, for example, for me, I don't like it when I'm trying to contact someone by phone and they don't call me back. Or today you're trying to do an email and they don't respond. That really used to bother me and throw me into anger, fits of rage. And then, in t and I lost friendships because of it. So I had to recognize that within myself. Fear of being abandoned, that can be at any age. Fretful behavior, urinary and bowel problems, you don't need to be a child 18 months and under to experience any of that. Let's go on to toddlers and preschool. Fear of particular adult or specific places, sex play with toys, poor peer relationships, lacerations of sex organs, bleeding discharge or odors from sex organs, depersonalization, fear of guilt or anxiety, regressive or non-age appropriate behavior, increase in gentile play, or genital play, sorry, toileting issues, fear of refusal, new problems in bowel or batter, bladder control, sexual acting out that is age inappropriate, advanced knowledge of detailed adult sexual activity. school age children, sleep disturbances, school problems, poor peer relationships, depersonalization, school phobias, anorexia, bulimia, role confusion, self-blame, fear, low self-esteem, wish for a normal family, whatever that means, responsible for family, running away, adolescence, school problems, drugs and or alcohol, clinical depression, promiscuity, prostitution, suicide attempts, overly compliant behavior, poor self-image, eating disorders, adults, effects from being sexually abused as a child, problems with intimacy, confusion in sexual identity, lack of trust, poor body image, and sexual dysfunction. They've only got one, two, three, four, five for the adults, but oh, no. No, no, no. 
any of these symptoms can manifest when you're an adult in the different forms. You can be an adult and still have urinary and bowel problems. You can be an adult and still fe fear being abandoned. You can be an adult and still have excessive crying, failure to thrive, extreme behavior change, sleep disturbances. And within each one of these, most survivors are going to pass through most of these signs and symptoms. Look at all the work that child sexual abuse survivors have to do to get through their trauma. And it never really ends. It gets better. I don't want to be a downer. But at the same time, I don't want to lie to sexual abuse survivors and say it's an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. But it is a doable journey. It is a possible journey. And there is peace and there is rest on the other side. So I encourage you, get into your boat. Start going. Even if you fall out of your boat, get back into your boat. Because you're going to fall out of your boat a lot of times. But just get back into your boat and keep on going. Because whatever the enemy's plans, were, plans are, which is why he put such a tragic trauma into your life. He's trying to destroy what God has for you. And there's no better way to destroy a child than to be sexually abused. But it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to go along with his plan. And just because somebody violated you in the most grotesque way, there is restoration. And I encourage every survivor no matter what your age is, hope in the restoration. Because you don't just need healing. You need to be restored. Everything that was taken away from you, you need that restoration back. And so I pray for every survivor today, wherever you are on your healing journey, be confident in yourself. Love yourself today. Do something for yourself today. And I'm not trying to make this all about you because it also can become very selfish if we always make it about us. But child sexual abuse survivors tend to care for everybody else and then neglect themselves. And we have to learn to take care of ourselves once again. So if you see your symptoms in any of what I have read, I encourage you that if you have counselors to talk to them about them. If you are a researcher, research them. If you are a religious person, and I don't like the word religious, but if you believe in a higher power, seek it out. Seek out the answers. Seek out the restoration. Because it's right there. We have to work for it, unfortunately, and go through a lot of pain to get to it. But you are such a much better person and you know what? Sexual abuse, for some reason, when we take on the healing journey, we become better people. We become very unique, very compassionate, and very empathetic. And that's what the world needs right now. It really needs the compassion and the empathy that child sexual abuse survivors have within, within themselves. Now, not all are able to tap into that. But we all have it. We all have this ability to love. But the child sexual abuse takes away that ability. But we can learn to love again. We can do it. Be blessed survivors today.